Secretary Clinton, let me follow up with you. Your husband called Obamacare, quote, the craziest thing in the world, saying that small business owners are getting killed as premiums double, coverage is cut in half. Was he mistaken or was his mistake simply telling the truth? No, I mean, he clarified what he meant, and, and it's very clear. Look, we are in a situation in our country where if we were to start all over again, we might come up with a different system. But we have an employer-based system. That's where the vast majority of people get their health care. And the Affordable Care Act was meant to try to fill the gap between people who were too poor and couldn't put together any resources to afford health care, namely people on Medicaid. Obviously, Medicare, which is a single-payer system, which takes care of our elderly and does a great job doing it, by the way. And then all the people who were employed, but people who were working but didn't have the money to afford insurance and didn't have anybody, an employer or anybody else, to help them. That was the, the slot that the Obamacare uh, approach was to take. And like I say, 20 million people now have health insurance. So if we just rip it up and throw it away, what Donald's not telling you is, we just turn it back to the insurance companies the way it used to be. And Dr. that Clinton. means the insurance companies get to do pretty much whatever they want, including saying, look, I'm sorry, you've got diabetes, you had cancer, your child has asthma, your time is up. you may not be able to have insurance because you can't afford it. So let's fix what's broken about it, but let's not throw it away and give it all back to the insurance companies Mr. and let the Let me follow companies. up with you, Mr. That's not going to work. Mr. Trump, let me follow up uh, well, on I this. I just want to, just one thing. First let, of all, Hillary, everything's broken about it, everything. Number two, Bernie Sanders said that Hillary Clinton has very bad judgment. This is a perfect example of it, Mr. trying Trump, to save Obamacare, which is... You've said disaster. you want to end By Obamacare. Way, you've said you want to end Obamacare. You've also said you want to make coverage accessible for people with pre-existing conditions. How do you force insurance companies to do that if you're no longer mandating that every American get insurance? We're going to be able to. You're going to have plans. What, what does that mean? That, well, I'll tell you what it means. You're going to have plans that are so good because we're going to have so much competition in the insurance industry once we break out, once we break out the lines and allow the competition to come. Are you, Obama are you going to have a mandate that Americans Anderson, have to have health insurance? Me. President Obama, by keeping those lines, the boundary lines around each state, and it was almost gone until just very toward the end of the passage of Obamacare, which, by the way, was a fraud. You know that. Because Jonathan Gruber, the architect of Obamacare, was said, he said it was a great lie. It was a big lie. President Obama said, you keep your doctor, you keep your plan. The whole thing was a fraud, and it doesn't work. But when we get rid of those lines, you have competition, and we will be able to keep pre-existing. We'll also be able to help people that can't get don't have money because we are going to have people protected. And Republicans feel this way, believe it or not, and strongly this way. We're going to block grant into the states. We're going to block grant into Med Medicaid into Thank the you, states Trump. so that we will be able to take care of people without the necessary funds to take care of themselves. Thank you, Mr. Trump. We now go to Gorba Hamid with a question for both candidates. Hi. There are 3.3 million Muslims in the United States, and I'm one of them. You've mentioned working with Muslim nations, but with Islamophobia on the rise, how will you help people like me deal with the consequences of being labeled as a threat to the country after the election is over? Mr. Trump, you're first. Well, you're right about Islamophobia, and that's a shame. But one thing we have to do is we have to make sure that because there is a problem. I mean, whether we like it or not, and we can be very politically correct, but whether we like it or not, there is a problem. And we have to be sure that Muslims come in and report when they see something going on. When they see hatred going on, they have to report it. As an example, in San Bernardino, many people saw the bombs all over the apartment of the two people that killed 14 and wounded many, many people. Horribly wounded. They'll never be the same. Muslims have to report the problems when they see them. And, you know, there's, a, there's always a reason for everything. If they don't do that, it's a very difficult situation for our country. Because you look at Orlando, and you look at San Bernardino, and you look at the World Trade Center, go outside, you look at Paris, look at that horrible, these are radical Islamic terrorists. And she won't even mention the word, and nor will President Obama. He won't use the term radical Islamic Terrorism. Now, to solve a problem, you have to be able to state what the problem is or at least say the name. 
She won't say the name, and President Obama won't say the name, but the name is there. It's radical Islamic terror. And before you solve it, you have to say the name. Secretary Clinton. Well, thank you for asking your question. And I've heard this question from a lot of Muslim Americans across our country. Because, unfortunately, there's been a lot of very divisive, dark things said about Muslims. And even someone like Captain Khan, the young man who sacrificed himself defending our country in the United States Army, has been subject to attack by Donald. I want to say just a couple of things. First, we've had Muslims in America since George Washington. And we've had many successful Muslims. We just lost a particularly well-known one with Muhammad Ali. My vision of America is an America where everyone has a place. If you're willing to work hard, you do your part, you contribute to the community, that's what America is. That's what we want America to be for our children and our grandchildren. It's also very short-sighted and even dangerous to be engaging in the kind of demagogic rhetoric that Donald has about Muslims. We need American Muslims to be part of our eyes and ears on our front lines. I've worked with a lot of different Muslim groups around America. I've met with a lot of them, and I've heard how important it is for them to feel that they are wanted and included and part of our country, part of our homeland security, and that's what I want to see. It's also important, I intend to defeat ISIS, to do so in a coalition with majority Muslim nations. Right now, a lot of those nations are hearing what Donald says and wondering, why should we cooperate with the Americans? And this is a gift to ISIS and the terrorists violent jihadist terrorists. We are not at war with Islam. And it is a mistake, and it plays into the hands of the terrorists to act as though we are. So I want a country where citizens like you and your family are just as welcome as anyone else. Thank you, Secretary Clinton. Mr. Trump, in December, you said this. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. We have no choice. We have no choice. Your running mate said this week that the Muslim ban is no longer your position. Is that correct? And if it is, was it a mistake to have a religious test? First of all, Captain Khan is an American hero. And if I were president at that time, he would be alive today. Because unlike her, who voted for the war without knowing what she was doing, I would not have had our people in Iraq. Iraq was a disaster. So he would have been alive today. The Muslim ban is something that, in some form, has morphed into a extreme vetting from certain areas of the world. Hillary Clinton wants to allow and, and why did it morph excuse into me, that? No, did me. you? No, answer the question. Why do you, you still believe? Her? You I do. me all the time. Why don't you Would interrupt you her? Would you please explain whether or not the Muslim ban still stands? It's called extreme vetting. We are going to areas like Syria, where they're coming in by the tens of thousands because of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton wants to allow a 550 percent increase over Obama. People are coming into our country like we have no idea who they are, where they're from, what their feelings about our country is, and she wants 550 percent more. This is going to be the great Trojan horse of all time. We have enough problems in this country. I believe in building safe zones. I believe in having other people pay for them. As an example, the Gulf states who are not carrying their weight, but they have nothing but money, and take care of people. But I don't want to have, with all the problems this country has and all of the problems that you see going on, hundreds of thousands of people coming in from Syria when we know nothing about them. We know nothing about their values, and we know nothing about their love for our country. And Secretary Clinton, let me ask you about that, because you have asked for an increase from 10 to 65,000 Syrian refugees. We know you want tougher vetting. That's not a perfect system. 
So why take the risk of having those refugees come into the country? Well, first of all, I will not let anyone into our country that I think poses a risk to us. But there are a lot of refugees, women and children. Think of that picture we all saw of that four-year-old boy with the blood on his forehead because he'd been bombed by the Russian and Syrian air forces. There are children suffering in this catastrophic war, largely, I believe, because of Russian aggression. And we need to do our part. We by no means are carrying anywhere near the load that Europe and others are. But we will have vetting that is as tough as it needs to be from our professionals, our intelligence uh, experts, and others. But it is important for us as a uh, policy, you know, not to say, as Donald has said, we're going to ban people based on a religion. How do you do that? We are a country founded on religious freedom and liberty. How do we do what he has advocated without causing great distress within our own country? Are we going to have religious tests when people fly into our country? And how do we expect to be able to implement those? So I thought that what he said was extremely unwise and even dangerous. And indeed, you can look at the propaganda on a lot of the terrorist sites. And what Donald Trump says about Muslims is used to recruit fighters because they want to create a war between us. And the final thing I would say, this is the 10th or 12th time that he's denied being for the war in Iraq. We have it on tape. The entire press corps has looked at it. It's been debunked, but it never stops him from saying whatever he wants has to say. Has not been debunked. So please has uh, not been debunked. go I to was Hillary against, Clinton. I was against, and, and you can see it. I was against the war in Iraq. Has not been debunked. And you voted for it, and you shouldn't have. Well, I just want to There's been lots say, of fact-checking on me. that. I'd like to move on excuse to an me. online question. She just went about 25 seconds over her time. She Could did I not. just respond to this, please? Very quickly, please. Hillary Clinton, in terms of having people come into our country, we have many criminal illegal aliens. When we want to send them back to their country, their country says, we don't want them. In some cases, they're murderers, drug lords, drug problems. And they don't want them. And Hillary Clinton, when she was Secretary of State, said, that's okay, we can't force it into their country. Let me tell you, I'm going to force them right back into their country. They're murderers and some very bad people. And I will tell you uh, very strongly, when Bernie Sanders said she had bad judgment, she has really bad judgment because we are letting people into this country that are going to cause problems and crime like you've never seen. We're also letting drugs pour through our southern border at a record clip, at a record clip. And it shouldn't be allowed to happen. ICE just endorsed me. They've never endorsed a presidential candidate. The Border Patrol agents, 16,500, just recently endorsed me. And they endorse me because I understand the border. She doesn't. She wants amnesty for everybody. Come right in. Come right over. It's a horrible thing she's doing. She's got bad judgment, and honestly, so bad that she should never be president of the United States. That Thank I can tell you. Thank you, Mr.